With the latest version of Kubernetes, that is 1.24, it has stopped supporting Docker. Now you may have a lot of questions about, oh, what, what is going on? Uh, how does it impact my work? I'm a developer or I may be a, a DevOps engineer. And uh, what do I do from here? Should I stop using Docker? What else should I be using? Now, if you have been wondering about all of uh, those things, uh, here goes the real story behind it. And uh, that will give you a lot of clarity about what's going on and how does it impact your work. This is Gaurav Shah from School of DevOps, and here goes the complete story. Well, this story goes back to 2012 and 13. Late 2012 was when Docker was uh, created, and 2013 was when it became really, really popular. And between 2013 and 2015, Docker gained a lot of popularity. However, there were others around as well. So uh, there was Rocket by CoreOS, there was LXD by Canonical, the Ubuntu's company, and they were all duplicating the efforts. And that is when Linux Foundation brought all of them together, and uh, what was formed was the OCI standards body. Now, this is a very important milestone. I'll come back to it when uh, in the story again later. Uh, and OCI you know, uh, defines the uh, two different spe specifications, one for the image, one for the runtime. And everyone agrees basically uh, how the image should look like and that gives uh, way to interoperability. So if you create an image with Docker, it can be used with Rocket and LXD and vice versa. And uh, the runtime specification led to the runtime that uh, Docker contributed in the form of libcontainer. And what came out of that was RunC. And on top of RunC, Docker along with Google and IBM created a runtime called as Container D. RunC is a lower level uh, runtime which uh, you know only knows how to run a container, create the namespaces, uh, C groups and all of that, but it doesn't know how to uh, pull the images, work with the registry and a lot of other things and it does not run as a daemon. And that is the gap that container day fills and on top of that Docker has its own uh, daemon which does a lot more things, right? So because Docker is not only about running containers, when it has to run container it delegates it to the container D and from there onwards to run C. However, Docker also gives you a way to build images and uh, manage logs, volumes, the UX components. Uh, it gives you tooling to install and set up container environment using something like Docker Desktop. So Docker does a lot more than just running containers. But when it has to run the container, this is the way it takes. Docker became really popular. However, uh, then came Kubernetes and initial versions of Kubernetes when it was released in 2015, it exclusively worked with Docker Daemon. Now, if you look at Kubernetes, it does a lot of things on its own. It just needs a runtime to actually launch and run those containers as in applications in isolated environments. And for that, it could just do with a simple runtime as well. Initially, it worked with Docker, but then Rocket came in and said, hey, we want to be, uh, we want to be compatible with you. And then uh, they basically submitted a pull request saying that, hey, uh, we add a code saying that, hey, if Rocket is present, use it. If not, fall back to Docker. Now, Kubernetes' team coming from Google did not like that way and they created, they decided to create something called as a CRI, a language. So that, uh, simply, uh, simply put, they said that, uh, hey, we will create a language called as CRI, Container Runtime Interface, and using that, we will interface with any runtime who understands our language. Essentially, any runtime, including Container D, Cryo, or even Rocket at that time, um, you know, um, any runtime which understood CRI uh, could work with Kubernetes simply. So it simplified things there. However, uh, Docker was never directly compatible with the CRI. And to make it work, Kubernetes had to maintain this additional code called as Docker Shim just to talk to Docker. Because when you have Docker Daemon and Container D today, uh, you had to go via Docker Daemon uh, to reach out to the Container D and to use it as a runtime. Because Docker Daemon would exclusively own Container D if it is present. And the way to get there was via Docker Shim. Now, this is the important piece and uh, it has a significance. I'll come to that in a few seconds from now. But Docker Shim, Shim is basically a wedge. So if your door is not closing, you make a, a temporary adjustment. And uh, this was a temporary code, temporary adjustment to make it work with Docker. So it was always temporary. So when Kubernetes announced it, um, you know, in uh, I think uh, sometime 
a year and half ago um you know and they said that uh, we're going to deprecate this docker shim in 1.23 and that is exactly what has happened a release later one point with 1.24 version of kubernetes that stopped supporting docker actually they stopped supporting docker shim not docker right but the way to get to docker was through docker shim so this is what has been deprecated and this is what is going away now interesting thing here is kubernetes supports this CRI and then there are many run times which already are compliant with Kubernetes, including container D itself and cryo, which is a CRI O or, uh, you know, a, a runtime created specifically for Kubernetes itself. And that has been the case for a while. In fact, you would be surprised to know that a lot of platforms, like if you go and look at any managed cloud platform, managed Kubernetes platform, it's not been used, using Docker for a while now. So this change has an impact where uh, only when you set up Kubernetes. So only when you set up Kubernetes and add nodes to that cluster, instead of installing Docker, you could directly install Containerd or you could go for Cryo as well. And as far as Kubernetes is concerned, there is a component which sits on every node called as kubelet. That is the one which talks to the runtime and it is intelligent enough to find a runtime and it has a specific order it goes and looks at. So if it finds continuity, it's going to pick that up automatically. And the only change that you have to do is either not install Docker D or if you have it, uh, uninstall it and you know, install containerd again from scratch or just go and install cryo on those nodes. And that would make it compatible with Kubernetes. Simple as that. So from here on, um, when you set up Kubernetes cluster, it would be either containerd cryo or something compatible with CRI. Even a run C is directly, you know, sort of compatible with CRI for that matter. And that change should be, you know, um, it's going to impact only the folks who are going to um, install and set up Kubernetes clusters. Now, what about development now? And that is where OCI, the important milestone that I spoke about comes into play because you can still continue using Docker. Now there are alternatives to Docker. Yes. Uh, alternatives such as Podman and build, uh, and uh, Scopio, I mean, set of tools, which you can, you know, replace Docker with in development, but you know, when you're getting started, Docker is the simplest and quickest way uh, to set up an environment and to work with it. And the best part is, uh, even if you have created an image with Docker, uh, using Docker file and so on, uh, that is still compliant with OCI. This OCI standard comes into play there because the image that you have built with Docker is still compliant with any other runtime in Kubernetes. So there is no real need to change that environment in, in the development, so you can still continue using Docker. And especially if you're using Windows based environment or Windows based container that you want to run, uh, you don't have a, you know, a, a good alternative to Docker yet on Linux, you still have some, um, and you can explore that for, but that is for different reason, not because Kubernetes has sub stopped supporting uh, Docker in the production like environment. Right. So my advice is continue using Docker, Docker Compose. Those tools are good, uh, still valid, still would work. And you could still write Docker files. You could uh, still take those images and publish it to the registries, which could then be run in Kubernetes as is without any change to that image or to that workflow. The only thing that you have to be concerned about is when you set up Kubernetes, you don't install Docker. And that is this whole story about, right? So is, uh, is Docker dead? Not really. In development, you continue using it as is. Uh, so it is not completely dead. It is dead when it comes to Kubernetes. So Kubernetes will stop supporting Docker. And there was no need for Kubernetes to use Docker as such because it just need a, needs a simple runtime. And it could just do with a simple lightweight runtime such as Containerd and Cryo. And that is the story behind this news. And that is the impact that is going to be there. Uh, on your workflow. So really no impact in terms of development, in terms of the cluster setup, you may have to make a small change out there. Well, I hope that gives you a bit of a clarity about what's going on and how does it impact your work. And if you want to get started with your container journey, uh, and uh, that is with Docker, definitely go and check out the free course that I have linked in the description below and uh, go grab your access to it and get started with uh, running Docker in a day or so. 
Uh, that's it from my side. Thank you very much. This is Gaurav from School of DevOps, and I'm going to see you in the next one. Oh, yeah. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Ding.